Hi and welcome to the next video in this tutorial where we're going to be looking at property decorators. Now property decorators are a way of defining properties in a class which are attributes that have some kind of logic behind them. Properties basically allow you to access and modify the data of an object without exposing the implementation details or breaking the encapsulation um, sort of principle. Now I haven't explained encapsulation principle with you before but essentially with OO you are encapsulating all of the attributes and all of the methods within the object themselves. So um, what you're trying to do in, uh, with using property decorators is hiding all of those attributes and all of those methods and really starting to understand how can I allow users to interact with only the bits that I want them to interact with. So let's take a look at this. I've got, I'm going back to similar to what we had in uh, lesson one where we had um, the person class. This was our uh, person um, lesson, uh, which I actually ended up modifying just slightly in uh, lesson six with uh, adding this extra um, boilerplate in here so we can represent the person in a way that is more user friendly. Um, here I'm going to be splitting name into first name, last name, and I'm, I'm going to be including the age. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a special uh, property decorator, decorator called property and what I'm going to do is create a function called name that looks as though it is a attribute but it's really not so um, what I'm going to do is return just an f string of uh, the first name so self dot first name and the the, uh, the last name so f uh, self dot last name. Okay, so what I can now do is do Andy dot name. Okay, so I'm going to just print that. Now you'll see that this is a it, it is a function, but actually, or a method, I should say, it is a method, but it's not going to look like a method. I can just access this uh, method name by using by calling the name, but because of the property decorator, it looks as though it's a it's an attribute. So if I run this you'll see that I get the output of Andy Delinsky because I've called name. But if I try to do Andy.name equals Bob, now I'm going to get an error because by default, um, it's not it's it's not a setter. It's not a an attribute that I can adjust. OK, so I can I can change that, though, by using a special getter method or setter method rather. So at, uh, and I'm going to do uh, setter.name and I'm going to do def name self and now I'm going to do uh, self, uh, in fact I'm going to pass in, I should pass in two values here, first name and last name and I'm just going to do self dot uh, first name equals first name and self dot last name equals last name. Okay. Now, when I do um, name, I can pass in two values. Oh, actually, I should forget that. Make it even better. Uh, let's do uh, full name. And I'm going to do, um, let's do uh, first name equals, well, we want to split it, don't we? So let's go with, um, let's change it. Let's go with um, the, the cool way of doing it. We're going to just do this little split here. Oops. First name, last name is equal to full name dot split. Okay. So now, uh, if I let's change this to um, I want to rename myself to Andrew Delinsky instead I can then print Andy dot name again and you should see that my name has changed from Andy Delinsky to Andrew Delinsky or not oh did it the wrong way around name dot setter there we go so Andy Delinsky, Andrew Delinsky, um, and it, you know, to the outside world, you know, to the programmer, 
I'm interacting with the name in, in quite an intuitive way. Name looks like an attribute and I can modify the name in a particular way. Now this also has some benefits because I can do things with the age, for example. Let's do another property for the age. Um, I actually want to make age, I'm just gonna, I'll explain this, what I'm doing here uh, in the next video when I look at uh, public and private. I'm just gonna set age to underscore, underscore age, so double underscore dunder. Um, and I'm gonna go def age here, and this is set to self, and I'm just gonna return uh, self dot underscore, underscore age. Do the same thing for the setter version, age dot setter. And I'm going to do define age, self, and new age. And I can apply some validation rules here. I can say something like, if new age is less than zero, um, then age is equal to zero. Else age equals new age. Okay. So here I've got some built-in logic. I can do some um, validation rules. I can say, right, I can't have a negative age, but what I can have is a minimum age set to zero if someone enters minus one or minus 100, or I could be happy that any age that's above or is zero and above is a valid age. So let's just um, modify the age. So andy.age is equal to minus one. Oh, let's do something silly, minus... Uh, uh, 100,000, but then if I print andy.age, you should see that it's, um, oops, I don't want that, I've done one. You should see that it's set to zero. And there it is, it's set to zero. So there's a little lesson on property decorators. And in this example, um, we're only looking at a property decorator and a setter. I call these basically getters and setters. This property decorator is a getter, I can retrieve information, and this property decorator is a setter where I can set information um, or set values. And what's really good about the setters is that I can apply some sort of logic to help protect my code. I can write a little bit of defensive programming in there. Right then, hope that was useful. Another short video. Um, in the next lesson, we're gonna look at a little bit more of these, um, these um, dunder underscore attributes um, and there are other opportunities to look at some other uh, property decorators as well which we're going to explore in future videos for now though take care have a nice uh, day evening afternoon wherever you are on the day